Well, happy December, everybody. It's been a long time. I have been wanting to catch y'all up and just haven't been able to find the time and the mental energy to do so. So um, it's, you know, a busy season. I'm gonna catch you guys up while wrapping some <laughs> Christmas presents. So uh, bear with me, I've never done this before. Um, so in this video, I just kind of want to give everybody a life update. Um, basically from my birthday onward, I think the last I left you guys off with, um, I had found out that I have a KCNJ2 mutation um, that's currently considered benign by uh, the labs that do genetic testing for periodic paralysis, but it's considered probable pathogenic in Varsome. And um, there's some, there's at least one other person in our periodic paralysis group that has the same variant at the same location. Um, so um, I had reached out to Dr. Steve Cannon, who's a expert in periodic paralysis, and I reached out to a genetic counselor at Advent Health, um, who's on the same team as Dr. Jareth, who's the, Dr. Jareth is who I see for periodic paralysis. Um, and they both agree that it is, both the genetic counselor and Dr. Cannon agree that it could be periodic paralysis. Um, so I feel pretty confident that what I've been experiencing is the anderson Tool syndrome subtype of periodic paralysis. Um, so I've just been grateful to have that kind of confirmation, um, have a sense that I'm not going crazy. Um, but also, uh, I've had like other medical procedures that I've been putting off, like a, I was recommended for a endoscopy and a colonoscopy um, about a year and a half ago um, because I have, I've had chronic GI issues and that can be a part of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, we certainly have GI issues in our family. Um, my grandma actually passed away due to complications with her colon. So it was just something I wanted to make sure that I'm on top of, but <clears throat> the tricky thing with periodic paralysis is that um, when it comes to like colonoscopy prep, that can shift your potassium. So I would need to do a different kind of prep work for that and also to like bear in mind different uh, considerations for anesthesia. So I put a hold on the endoscopy and colonoscopy until I could figure out um, so that I could have like more confidence about whether I really had periodic paralysis and then to figure out the recommendations for the prep and for the anesthesia. So um, after <laughs> figuring all this out with periodic paralysis, um, I was kind of taking a break from doctor's appointments, apart from just like routine visits, um, having an IUD placed recently, I just kind of over like having doctor's appointments. And so I just was chilling and, you know, doing normal life stuff, which I was happy to do. That was partly why I decided to take a break from YouTube. I felt like I just kind of needed um, a break in general. And, um, so anyways, I um, got to celebrate my birthday in Orlando with my husband, which was a lot of fun. Um, I had scheduled a nephrology appointment on my birthday, um, which actually it was like one of the best doctor's appointments I've ever had. The doctor that I saw, Dr. Warren at Advent Health was one of the sweetest like best listeners that I have ever encountered like as a human being in general. I've I was really refreshed to have that experience. Um so um that appointment went well. I don't have any kidney issues. The reason that I had that appointment was to rule out kidney issues. That's part of just the differential for um I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but um kidney issues can look like or cause periodic paralysis, like secondary periodic paralysis. And so um, Dr. Jareth just wanted to make sure that we were not missing anything there. And so kidneys are good, which is excellent news. I guess I should like get onto this wrapping business. 
Um, but what I'll cover in this video is um, our cat chaos that kind of ensued <laughs> in the past month, um, the GI issues, and then I'll give you a quick update on the loop recorder, which isn't too much of an update, but um, just so that you guys know where that status lands. But um, so yeah, the nephrology appointment went really well, had a lot of fun. My husband and I um, stayed at an Airbnb in Orlando, which um, it turned out there were like peacocks that like just showed up in the morning. I don't know if it was just like this neighborhood that they, if they normally have peacocks, but that was pretty cool. Uh, we went to Lake Eola and saw like a bunch of really pretty swans and it was really cute. They have like the little paddle boats where you can go out um, and see the swans. We thought about doing that, but we did not. <laughs> and um, walking was good for us, but it was just gorgeous. Lots of beautiful trees. Um, but they had the little paddle boats and there was like a group of swans like in a line following one of the paddle boats as if it was like kind of like I guess the mama swan or something it was really cute um and let's see what else we had giant cookies like these are literally a pound each cookies from Gideon's and um just for <laughs> clarity I'm not getting paid by anybody that I'm mentioning here like Gideon's or um otherwise um, just sharing some great experiences in case you happen to be in Orlando and are interested in that kind of thing but um, we also went to Disney Springs aka used to be downtown Disney I don't know how many of you are watching that <laughs> remember it as downtown Disney but that is going to be showing my age and that's okay um, yeah, we had some great barbecue there. It was pretty jammed pack, packed, jam packed. Uh, it was like Halloween, and of course there was like Halloween horror nights going on at Universal. So I imagine that added to the crowds. Um, Mickey's not so scary Halloween and everything, um, but it was a lot of fun. And after that, you know, we rolled right into November, and things just kind of went crazy from there. We took. Uh, one of our cats, Sassy, to the vet just for a routine visit. She's very like skittish around like new people. She's kind of skittish in general. She's a rescue from um, a hoarding situation. And um, we had been told by her previous foster mom that when she was a kitten and they tried to take her to the vet that like they couldn't do anything really um they had to send the foster mom home with like a syringe and medicine to give her like her cat her kitten shots and even then the foster mom can only like give her the shots like at like two or three in the morning so um wasn't feeling very sure that we'd get very far with that appointment, but she actually did really great. And which was, what was also really surprising, we cannot pick her up. Like she just, she like freaks out. She's not like angry, just like freaked out and you'll get scratched <laughs> all over. Um, and so, but like the cat the at the vet, they like held her a particular way and they were able to pick her up, which was like, we were both shocked. So, um, but she did really well. Um, she got like routine vaccinations and when we got her home, she was like trigger warning. This is like GI related stuff that it was, I'll just say it's very, it was very messy. <laughs> there were things happening on both ends of the poor kitty. Um, and it was not good. There were a lot of like really terrible smells and, um, we ended up having to take her to, the vet ER. Um, it turned out she was having a systemic reaction to one of the vaccines. And so, um, like they had to keep her overnight at the vet ER and yeah, it was, it was a little, it was a little scary for a minute there, but I'm really glad, like, I thought she might've just been stressed out at first, but my husband was the one to like point out like, 
oh, she might be having a reaction to the vaccine. And I'm so glad that he had mentioned that <clears throat> because I, it just was not on my mind, which is kind of surprising. Oh no, I just spilled coffee. So that'll be for the uh, stain remover. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm just gonna carry on because I know my stain thing can handle that. But um, yeah, so she stayed overnight. She, poor little thing, she's had like, my husband calls them the reverse boots, where like part of parts of her legs were all shaved from where they put the IVs. So her fur has been slowly growing back. She's okay now. Um, in the meantime, I was out on a walk in our area and saw an orange tabby coming from a building. Uh, one of the neighbors that I have met, had met on a walk with our other cat, Henry, and it fit the description of like the neighbor that I had been talking to uh, described her orange tabby because she saw me walking Henry on a leash and she was just gushing over orange cats. And you know, there's a lot of orange tabbies out there, um, but this seemed to meet, uh, match her description. And it was coming from her building or so it seemed. <laughs> and so I was like, what are the chances that this is her cat? She's an older lady. and I. I was like, well, ooh, we can like, you know, I, I like ended up calling my husband. He brought down the cat carrier and we went up and knocked on doors. And long story short, it was not her cat. <laughs> she had been talking about her daughter's cat um, who does not live in our apartment complex. So um, ironically, she had a little baby tabby that was like three weeks old that she had, or no, she had just gotten it three weeks ago, but it was like a really super kitten. Um, and so anyways, um, we had a stray cat and obviously with Sassy being in her state, we were being pretty precautious with her getting exposed. We didn't know where this had cat had been, if it might have any kind of um, diseases that we didn't know it was carrying. It seemed really well taken care of. Like we brought him back to our place once we figured out that like it was, um, like we didn't know whose cat it was. Um, and we kept it in my husband's room and he just like made himself at home right on his bed, started purring, was like nodding off to sleep, just made himself at home. He was super cute and also like, wow, you are a confident kitty. <laughs> And so like you, you must know home life. He didn't have any fleas. He was well groomed, um, giant, like literally 14 pounds of cat. But when I had been out walking, he'd just come right up to me, was meowing, was like trying to hop on my lap. And so, um, it, it was, he was super sweet. Um, but during the night he was crying all through the night and we had many nights of very little sleep. It felt like we were going through parenthood between Sassy having major GI issues and then this cat keeping us up at night. And so anyways, we ended up putting up flyers, posting on the web. Um, we, the cat ended up getting rehomed to a family that recognized him and it actually had been feeding him in months prior. So it was a, it was a good ending. Like it, he found a home, a permanent home. Um, I learned in the process that male cats such as he was that are not neutered. And that was his situation, uh, tend to meow at night because they want out cause they want to go see their ladies. So, um, I learned that from a cat cafe in our area because we were, at wit's end about what to do in this situation. And they said, first thing you need to do is go get them neutered. So um, the new parents are taking care of that situation and he has a home. So that's, that's exciting. Immediately following all this, by this point, we're like up to Thanksgiving. And um, Mark and I decided that we, Mark get, got a turkey from work, which was awesome. Um, so we were gonna bring the turkey to our family Thanksgiving um, dinner. And so we were in charge of the turkey and the pies. Well, <laughs> the night before Thanksgiving, 
Henry is going back and forth between his litter boxes, like very frequently, like less than every five minutes, he's going back and forth. And like the weird thing is, is that when he gets in the litter box, he's squatting as if he has to go potty, but nothing's coming out. And I knew from a previous family member's experience with her cat that that's not good, especially with male cats, because that can be fatal because um, they can have like a urinary blockage. So <laughs> we were going back to the vet ER, a different vet ER, but um, the first one was great, but this other one was like kind of like under our cat wellness plan. So, excuse me, so much cheaper, thankfully. The only problem is that they were only open until midnight. And by the time we got there, it was already 11. They literally told us that their doctor was about to go home for the night. Thankfully she hadn't and they were glad that we brought him in because they were like, yes, this could have been like a big emergency, but it ended up not being a full block. He ended up having bladder crystals. So um, we had to bring him back on Thanksgiving before going over to our family Thanksgiving in the early afternoon. And bearing in mind that we had the turkey that we were cooking that morning. <laughs> so it was just all kinds of chaos. Um, amid all of that, I started having GI issues and um, I'm not getting very far with my wrapping. I'm not a multitasker, if you can't tell. But um, I'm gonna come over here a little, some things. So I started having GI issues like diarrhea, which I don't normally get. I'm usually in the opposite realm of constipation, which is really annoying and really uncomfortable. But um, it is what it is. But thankfully, like the past year or so, I've been doing okay in that realm and actually like been regular. So I was really excited. Um, but anyway, so. I thought initially with like everything that was going on at the house, I just realized that I don't have like normal tape. I only brought the packing tape. Hmm. I might just use packing tape. Okay. I just really don't want to pause this because I lose my train of thought. But anyways, um, so yeah, I was having GI issues that are not typical for me, was having like, like combination um, things happening between diarrhea and constipation. And that was not typical for me. But yeah, I was like, there's been a lot of weird smells in the house. It's been like stressful finding this cat a home, like the stray cat a home and then all the Thanksgiving things, like there's been a lot of good in all of it, but it's been stressful. So I thought maybe like my stomach's just like freaking out, all the weird smells, all the stress. And like, so I thought it would just clear, but after like two weeks, I was like, I don't know, like maybe this is not what I think. <laughs> and so I made an appointment with my GI and they confirmed it had been like a year and a half and like, by this point, I was like, okay, if I need to do like an endoscopy or a colonoscopy, I'm okay at this point because I figured out that like, I probably do have periodic paralysis and need to treat the whole process as such. And so, um, I had an appointment. It went really well. I really love the nurse practitioner that I saw. She like has a lot of experience, like, in diverse fields like she delivered babies in the past and just like really intelligent lady um so i felt confident that like we were going in a good direction and she said that we can hold off on the whole colonoscopy endoscopy thing it might be something that i need to do in the future but um that for now we would just do like a stool test so that's what I did. It was really gross. Um, but basically you just collect your own poo and send it in a vial, like literally in the mail. It's really strange. Um, I've never done that before. I had to like cordon off my bathroom so that my husband wouldn't go in there. So yeah, 
Um, that was an experience. So I'm just waiting for the results from that now. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. So loop recorder, I am like, I went back and had the follow up with, uh, the EP, which my brain's still waking up y'all. I apologize. Electrophysiologist, I think is the name. And he said that everything, like there was nothing super concerning um, on my EKGs, like previous monitoring, we already knew that like I had sinus tachycardia. I had already been diagnosed with POTS in the past, which supposedly I no longer meet the diagnostic criteria for that, which I find interesting, um, but good, <laughs> not complaining. Uh, so if you happen to have POTS and you need some encouragement, you can reverse that diagnosis, um, or at least part, you can greatly improve it. Um, and I will say I feel a lot better than I did at the time of my POTS diagnosis. So yeah, so that was good. Nothing too concerning. He went back and checked my EKG to make sure that I didn't have like any indications of long QT since that's one of the indicators of Anderson to Will syndrome and like the weird thing is I think a lot of doctors like know about like long QT being associated with Anderson to Will. Uh, it used to be called long QT syndrome. I think that's kind of like an out of date um, name for it and it's actually a bit of a misnomer because um, there's a few other heart conditions that are associated with it now. Um, like ventricular arrhythmias, which my dad's experienced, and um, long QU. There's other other heart things that can happen. So anyways, I had like long QT in a couple of circumstances, he said. So I don't know. It is what it is. Like there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot that we don't know in general. And then it just kind of makes things a little bit more complicated. Hey, so I realized after filming that uh, first round that I actually didn't really update you guys on the uh, like the loop recorder situation itself. So um, the electrophysiologist did recommend that I get a loop recorder, um, especially because of um, my family history. Um, so he said that he was concerned about that and he wanted to take it seriously, which I appreciate. So I'm just uh, chatting with my insurance to figure out like how much of that is covered, what the cost will look like, and that kind of thing. So stay tuned. Um, that might be a thing in the coming months. We'll see. But that is the full update on the loop recorder. But anyways, I feel like I'm in a much better place. Um, with being able to manage things, which is good. Um, I will keep you guys posted on the GI situation. Hopefully I won't have to do like an endoscopy or colonoscopy, fingers crossed. I'm on famotidine, which is an acid reducer. I had previously been told that I might have GERD um, because I was having like regurgitation and like heartburn at times. I've been getting a little bit of that heartburn um, the past few weeks. So, um, I'm not really sure if the famotidine is helping, like, if maybe, I don't know. It's kind of maybe too early to tell, but yeah, so that's how things are going. I, <laughs> you guys, I have like, this is how far I've gotten in the wrapping. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but I'm really glad to have caught up with y'all and if you have any questions or thoughts or comments or similar experiences, I would love to hear it. I hope you're having a great holiday season. If I don't uh, chat with y'all before then, which I'm imagining not because Christmas is coming up fast, have a wonderful Christmas. Happy Hanukkah for anybody who's celebrating Hanukkah. Happy holidays and a very, very happy new year. Love you guys.